Did you know that during peak storm season, Venezuela's Lake Maracaibo experiences up to 280 lightning strikes an hour? That is one every 13 seconds. Can you imagine what an awesome sight that would be? But wait a minute, wait, 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 before you pack your bags and you rush off onto the next flight to Caracas, spare a thought for your personal safety. Lightning might be an impressive light show up in the clouds, but if you and your selfie stick are in the wrong place at the wrong time, the Catatumbo lightning could pose a pretty serious health hazard, as could any lightning, to be fair. As air, rain and ice is thrown around in cumulonimbus clouds towering up to seven kilometres high, static electricity builds up. Now, you may choose yoga or a game of squash or cuddling your cat to release tension, but when the potential builds up in a storm, their way of letting it all go is to discharge several million volts of electricity. Now, to put that into context, the electricity supplied by mains outlets at home in the UK is just 240 volts. And those high voltage power lines with their danger of death signs, only about half a million volts. The lightning is essentially a massive spark. The electric current extends down from the cloud, superheating the air that it passes through until it's five times hotter than the surface of the sun, turning it into plasma which glows blindingly bright. It will seek out tall objects or materials that can easily flow through, so water-filled trees or water-filled people are ideal targets. The problem is, since the strike will only take about a tenth of a second and will be travelling about a third the speed of light, there's no way of predicting when or where it might touch down. So, with 100 lightning bolts streaking down towards the Earth every single second, just what is the risk? You might have heard that you have a one in a million chance of being struck by lightning. Sounds pretty good odds, but that's only the probability of being struck in a given year. Across your whole lifetime, you're looking at something a bit more like a 1 in 13,500 chance. And since no man is an island, the likelihood of someone you know being affected by a lightning strike is more than 1 in a 1,000, which suddenly makes it all seem a lot more real. Around 4,000 people are reported to have been killed by lightning every year, although that number doesn't include the undeclared deaths in rural areas of developing countries. But even with such scary odds, it might surprise you to learn that 9 out of every 10 lightning strike victims live to tell the tale. And, in the US at least, annual lightning fatalities have dropped over the last few decades, from more than 450 in the early 90s to less than 50 today. One of the main reasons that so many survive when they're caught short by the sky's short circuit it is the shocking speed of the encounter. Yes, your body may become the unwitting host of several million volts, but only for the merest fraction of a second. And that helps to limit, but not entirely prevent, sadly, injury. Direct strikes have the potential to be the most damaging, since lightning tends to enter near the head and then travels all the way through the body to exit and discharge at the feet. Most of the electrical current will pass across the surface of the body in what's known as a flashover, instantly vaporising any moisture it encounters, which can have the somewhat disturbing effect of exploding the victim's clothes off. It can sometimes leave behind a lightning tree on the skin, an intricate pattern of burst blood vessels showing the path that the current took. The heat of the current could also melt materials like polyester and hang around in metal jewellery, causing fairly major burns. Flashovers help to discharge most of the lightning's energy, but some electricity will opt not to travel over the body, but through it. And that is where it can cause more serious and lasting damage. And that is because of our internal machinery. It relies on electricity. Our brain, spinal cord, our entire nervous system is basically an intricate network of wiring, along which nerve impulses, tiny electrical potentials, pass at great speeds to control the action of every muscle and gland, as well as coordinate our conscious and subconscious thoughts. Adding a few million extra volts to this network can not only send the recipient's muscles into sudden and uncontrollable spasms, but it can burn out neurons and shut down parts of the nervous system altogether. It can also stop the heart from beating, although our hearts do have their own internal pacemaker and can usually reset themselves. More worryingly, it can shut down the breathing centre of the brain, meaning you literally have no way of getting your lungs to inflate. Without oxygen getting into the blood, the heart can be sent into a more fatal arrest. It's seriously scary stuff, but there is a relatively simple solution. 
CPR. Many lightning strike survivors owe their lives to the dedicated actions of friends or strangers who have performed mouth to mouth to keep their blood full of oxygen until medical help can arrive. And there's little risk to first responders. Despite lightning's immense power, once it's gone, it's gone. There's no lingering electrical charge. So the next time you find a hiker lying naked and smouldering in a field after a storm, don't start searching for UFOs or snapping a photo. Donating a few of your breaths could mean the difference between life and death. Sadly though, it's not all good news. About three quarters of all lightning survivors are thought to suffer lasting physical or mental disability. Our squishy brains are just all too scrambled by vast current and people can be left paralysed or with personality changes and PTSD. While you are more likely to survive a lightning strike, it certainly isn't something to put yourself in the path of. And contrary to what you might have heard, rubber shoes won't necessarily keep you safe and lightning most certainly can strike the same place twice. Unfortunately, the only surefire way of surviving a lightning storm is to be nowhere near the storm at all. I want to know though, have you ever had a close call with Thor? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to Earth Lab for more shocking science videos. Sorry I couldn't resist. I've been so strong recently. Anyway, have an explore of the channel and I'll see you next time.